Yo, what's up? I'm Zach from the RL Knots, and today we're gonna go over 10 things you definitely didn't know. Top 10 things that you definitely did not know about Star Wars, because nobody knows Star Wars quite like the RL Knots. Number 10, Han did shots first. Now, you may be familiar with the phrase Han shot first, but what you didn't know is that originally Han did shots first. In Lucas's original vision, the only way to settle disputes in a den of ill repute like Mos Eisley Cantina was to drink your enemies under the table. In an era dominated by leading men such as Sean Connery and Clint Eastwood, drinking prowess was a big part of being a strong man. Early cuts depict Han confidently taking it to the head and easily dispatching the lightweight Greedo, who was down for the count after only a couple of drinks. The producers eventually decided that it didn't quite feel right for the main character to abuse alcohol for personal gain, so they decided it would be much better for Han to just shoot Greedo in the face and kill him like a real hero. And the rest is revisionist history. Number nine, the Millennium Falcon's mysterious third crew member. Did you even know there was a third crew member of the Millennium Falcon? As far as we know, the only remaining footage of this character can be seen in this shot right here. Do you see him? We know this isn't anyone from the main cast because everyone else can be seen here in the previous shot, safely strapped to their seats. This is in fact Joe Stowaway, an obnoxious antagonistic creature that snuck onto the ship and eventually won the crew's hearts through his kid-friendly shenanigans. Much like the original Job of the Hutt, Lucas felt that the film technology was not able to fully realize Joe Stowaway, so he didn't make the final cut. Fortunately for us, the character eventually saw the light of day when the technology had finally caught up to George's vision and he was reimagined as Joe Yauza, the spunky lead singer from Return of the Jedi's Special Edition. Since his new job was to express enthusiasm, they considered changing his name to Joe Excitement and then Joe Yeehaw, and at one point Joe Throw Your Hands in the Air before finally landing on Joe Yauza. It makes the most sense because one look at him will have you saying, yeah. Number eight, R2-D2 says, uh-oh. During the epic rescue sequence from Revenge of the Sith, R2-D2 uncharacteristically yells, uh-oh, in response to some on-screen action. <laughs> this marks the first and only time R2 speaks in plain English. So what happened? Could R2 always speak English in the same way that he could always fly? Nope! Like most of the coolest stuff from Star Wars, it was entirely accidental. Hey guys, I'm Boba Fett, the most unintentionally cool thing of all time. I'm so cool that I was added to this scene in the special edition to pander to how cool you think I am. As the king of unintentional coolness, I'm here to tell you that all the coolest things in Star Wars are total accidents. Wait, where were we? All right. Following the criticism that he utilized too much green screen and CGI in the prequels, Lucas aimed to fire back with a big action set piece and constructed a giant gimbal for the Palpatine rescue. This meant bringing back the man behind R2-D2, Kenny Baker, who is in for the ride of a lifetime. The inside of the R2 unit was notoriously hot and Kenny Baker was known to sneak in Kool-Aid jammers so that he could stay refreshed inside. The gimbal movement was so extreme, Baker ended up spilling Kool-Aid all over the inside of his suit, and before he could stop himself, he unconsciously yelled, uh-oh! Instead of getting upset, Lucas thought it was really funny, so he decided to keep it in. Lucas was reportedly heard saying, that's great, that's hilarious. R2's voice is something that people have never heard before, and I think it's wonderful. Let's keep it in. Hearing R2 say uh-oh in a human voice makes me so happy, and I think it'll make the kids happy too. Number seven, the origin of Darth Vader's iconic voice. Everyone knows that James Earl Jones was brought in to replace David Prowse as the voice of Vader, but not many people know the truth about why that happened. Prowse, an avid bodybuilder, maintained a high protein, high fiber diet in order to preserve Vader's intimidating size and bulk. One major side effect of this strict regimen, though, was a constant stream of uncontrollable flatulence. 
The gas buildups became so bad that the wardrobe department had to construct a special ventilator system in order to funnel the farts out of the Vader costume and keep Prowse from suffocating in the airtight outfit. As you can see from the original footage, this was a constant challenge. 16 Tech 9. And action! Activate punch! Where is the data you intercept? What have you done with those information tapes? We intercepted no information! This is a consular shift in New Zealand markings! We're on diplomatic mission! Where are those tapes? I'll link the commander knows that. This ship carries the crest of Alvin. Was there any of the royal family on board? Who were you carrying? Between the unpredictability of the gastric outbursts and the noise from Prowse's fart ventilators, Lucas had no choice but to ADR all of Vader's dialogue in post-production. Lucas was so resentful that he opted to use a different actor entirely, and James Earl Jones was punishment for Prowse's onset behavior. He then punished James Earl Jones by removing his name from the credits for 20 years. Number six, it's not a Lando, dummy. During the famous battle over the Sarlacc pit, Lando Calrissian finds himself in some trouble when he's blasted off the side of a skiff and ends up hanging for his life over the eponymous pit. Most people simply assume that the lifeless form hanging from the bottom of the skiff was a dummy, and they'd be wrong. During filming, Billy Dee Williams made a side bet with someone on the crew about how long he could hang from that skiff. 18 hours later, well after filming had ended, Billy D. Williams became the current record holder for longest time hanging from a movie prop without moving. Number five, Ewan McGregor's brother played Obi-Wan. We noticed many inconsistencies between these shots of Ewan McGregor. So what happened here? Well, everyone knows that Ewan McGregor has a twin brother named Owen, but what you don't know is that he was on set the day they filmed the Dex diner scene. Ewan, always wanted to bring humor to the set, suggested they prank Lucas by switching places for the last shot of the day. Oddly enough, Lucas never indicated that he was wise to the gag, simply instructing Owen to be faster, more intense. After half of the scene had been filmed, they were too embarrassed to say anything, and as you can see, the McGregor brothers' ruse was never discovered, and the slightly less bearded Owen remains in the film to this day. Owen never pursued an acting career officially, but he did find booming success when he opened up his own cannabis distribution company called A Sack of the Clones. Number four, the Jar Jar team. Jar Jar wasn't always meant to be a solo character or comic relief. Jar Jar is a key to all this. By key, Lucas was referring to Jar Jar as the center of a five-man elite team, each member with a different themed power. In addition to Jar Jar, team members included Jug Jug, Pot Pot, Flask Flask, and Flagon Decantor. And when their powers combined, they formed a fully functioning kitchen playset, each sold separately, of course. The axing of this idea would mark the only time in history Rick McCollum said the word no to George Lucas. Lucas then scribbled together a crude storyboard featuring Jar Jar slipping and falling in poop, yelling, Is this what you want, Rick McCollum? Because that's Jar Jar now! You did that! Number three. No, I am not your father. It's no secret that Lucas was making up a lot of details as he went along. For example, Leia was not Luke's sister, the Jedi were never intended to fast run, and Darth Vader was not originally Luke's long lost father. But Lucas shrewdly understood the power of family drama in this epic space opera. What many don't know is that they still hadn't determined what the exact relationship was between Luke and Vader when the time came to roll on the famous reveal. As you can see from the Empire Laserdisc documentary, they filmed several options to give themselves flexibility in the edit. And action! Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father! He told me enough! He told me you killed him. No! I didn't kill him, but I know who did. Join me, and we can bring this killer to justice. He told me you killed him. No, your father is still alive, and you must face him. You know him as the Emperor. He told me you killed him. It's true. If he hadn't stolen the damn tapes, he may still be alive. He told me you killed him. No. 
You have no father. You are a clone, engineered by the Empire itself to become the most powerful weapon in the universe. This would have changed the world of Star Wars as we knew it. Number two, parts of the Star Wars set are actually in space. George Lucas wanted to make a sci-fi adventure to remember, which meant dethroning the greatest sci-fi film of the time, 2001 Space Odyssey. In order to achieve this, Lucas knew that he had to film at least part of the movie in actual outer space. They successfully constructed a set for one scene, the famous Imperial Conference Room that introduced Grand Moff Tarkin. In this scene, all of the actors remained seated because the lack of gravity necessitated that they be safely strapped to their chairs with special harnesses. Each actor was given a diaper and a feeding tube, while actor David Prowse was equipped with magnetic boots. The power demands of the boots, combined with the complications of filming in outer space and Prowse's aforementioned fart ventilator, meant that the entire scene had to be redubbed in post. This behind the scenes footage from the original shoot gives you an idea of the conditions they had to work with. And action! Any attack by the rebels against this station would be a useless gesture, no matter what type of data they've obtained. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe! Don't be too proud of this technological Faster, more intense! Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed! Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes. Or give you clairvoyance enough to find the role as human Backlash from producers was swift, partly because the skyrocketing costs of shooting in space were untenable, but mostly because it made no sense to film windowless interiors in space. Number one, C-3PO is an actual robot with strong artificial intelligence. C-3PO is widely believed to be the character made famous by Anthony Daniels' unforgettable performance. But that's just what Hollywood wants you to think. In reality, C-3PO is an advanced prototype artificially intelligent robot. His real name is A1Z4, and he was an early attempt by George Lucas to eliminate human actors from the filmmaking process altogether. Hollywood was excited by this maverick director's attempt to reduce talent costs and the real life drama that is a natural side effect of working with humans. Early attempts fell short in delivering a believable human performance. But as Orson Welles famously said, the enemy of art is the absence of limitations, and trying to pass off A1Z4 as a human could certainly be considered a limitation. Thus, an entirely new vision was conceived to make use of A1Z4's strange appearance, a sci-fi world teeming with robots and futuristic wonders. Z4 not only scored a leading role, but arguably became one of the most important characters in the Star Wars franchise. But success was not without its challenges. Robot rights watchdogs were lurking around every corner, forcing Lucas and fellow producers to fabricate a cover story. They hired dropout law student Anthony Daniels to help sell the idea that C-3PO was merely a costumed man, not a fully conscious living robot man. Although Lucas has since given up on mechanized actors in favor of CGI, A1Z4 continues to enjoy his role as the fussy C-3PO, while Daniels has been able to build an entire life around his part in the conspiracy. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, look out for more Top 10s, and don't forget to spread the truth with these facts and share this video with everyone you know, your friends and family. And check out the description for a bunch of different ways you can help keep the All Nuts going.